Our goal today is going to be to create the equation of a tangent line. So for an equation, I need a point and a slope. So they're going to give me the point of tangency. I can use that as my point. And so that will be um, a f of a. But with a tangent, it only touches the graph in one point. How many points do you need to create the equation of a line? Two, if you don't have your slope, right? So I've got my one point right here. We'll call it point P, A, F of A. I'm going to need a second line. And so I'm going to use a secant line because a line that intersects the graph in two points is a secant line. So I'm going to use a secant line with my point of tangency as one of my points, P. And then my other point will be Q. And so we'll call this X value X. And so that would be the ordered pair X, F of X. So if I wanted to find the slope of that secant line, the slope of that secant line would be uh, Y2, F of X, minus Y1, F of A, over X2, X, minus X1, A. So all we did was just use the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that would give us the slope of our secant line. But if you'll notice, that secant line is not a good approximation of the slope of the tangent line. They're way off. So what would make the lines closer to having the same slope? Well, if the two points were closer to each other. So you'll notice that if instead of point P being here and Q being over here, if Q was a little bit closer, if it was here, now look, that green line is a much better approximation of the blue line than the red dotted one was. And what if we go even closer? So again, here's that same point P, it hasn't moved, but point Q is closer still now if you'll notice that orange line is a very good approximation of the blue line so in essence i would want the distance between my two points to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it was almost indistinguishable that sounds a lot like a limit right so if i'm looking for the distance between my two points x and a that's just going to be um the limit as x approaches a. So I want that x value to get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to a until the difference is almost indistinguishable. So I want x to approach a. So the slope of the tangent line is the limit of the slope of the secant line. Because again, we got this from doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 with the secant line. And then when we take the limit, we can approximate the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so they asked me to create the equation of a tangent line for y equals x squared at the point 1, 1. So if a is 1, if I put 1 in for a, 1 squared is positive 1, so f of a would be positive 1. So let's follow our formula. So limit as x approaches a, remember we just said that a was equal to 1. So f of x, well f of x was x squared minus f of a, f of a was 1, all over x minus a, and again a is 1. So if we try to find that limit, it is not well behaved because I get 0 in the denominator. And so I'm going to go back to what we were doing in chapter 2, and I'm going to see if there's a way to simplify that limit to make it well behaved. And so if we'll factor, then we're able to cancel the x minus 1s, and what we're left with is just the limit of x plus 1. That's a polynomial. It's well behaved, so I could just do direct substitution. So I'm going to put 1 in the place of x, and when I do, I'll get 1 plus 1 is 2. Again, notice our limit notation. We had to write limit every single time until we actually put the 1 in for x, and then we did not write limit any longer. All right, so what was that that we just found? Well, that was the slope. 
So now we have a point and a slope and we can create the equation of the line. So I'm going to use point slope form. I'm going to use y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So again our y value was 1, our x value was 1, and our slope was 2. So here's our point slope form. If we distribute that 2, we'll have 2x minus 2, and then we can add this one to the other side. That'd be 2x minus 1 if we want it in slope-intercept form. And if we want it in standard form, we can just subtract this y over so that we have 2x minus y minus 1 is equal to 0, and then it's in standard form. So whichever way they want us to give the equation of our line. All right, there's another way that we could approach the same discussion where we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line at the point P, but we're going to label point Q differently. If I start at point P, and we'll call that our A value, and we go over a horizontal shift H, that new X value would be A plus H, and the Y value would be F of A plus H. So we're going to say that P is A F of A and Q is A plus H F of A plus H. So now I want to find the slope between those two points. All right, so there's our A F of A and our A plus H F of A plus H. So if we do Y2 minus Y1, that's going to be F of A plus H minus F of A over X2 minus X1 x2 was a plus h and x1 was a. We could simplify the a's in the denominator and that will leave us with f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h for the slope of our secant line. And so that's what you'll see right here. Slope of the secant line f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. Now if I want the two points p and q to get closer and closer and closer, I want Q to approach P. That means the distance between them H needs to get smaller and smaller. It needs to approach zero. So we could say that the slope of the tangent line is the limit as H, the distance between the two points, approaches zero for the slope of the secant line. That's the slope formula that we just created. Now, this moving forward is the formula that we're going to use most often, and so that's the one that I will be utilizing. All right, so this time they ask us to create the equation of the tangent line for f of x is equal to 3 over x at the point 3, 1. All right, so to begin with, a is 3 and f of a is 1. So let's go ahead and plug those in. Let's plug in 3 for a and then we'll put in 1 for f of a. So f of 3 plus h, what does that tell me to do? Well, it tells me to put 3 plus h in the place of x in the function. So if f of x is 3 over x, then f of 3 plus h is 3 over 3 plus h. Um, then we've got minus 1 divided by h. All right, when you have a fraction inside of a fraction, the way to simplify that is to multiply by the least common denominator. So the least common denominator for 3 plus h, 1 and 1, because each of those whole numbers is over 1, would be 3 plus h. What I do to the top, I got to do to the bottom. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to multiply every single term by 3 plus h. So for this first term right here, the 3 plus h's would cancel and that would leave me with just 3. And then for the second term, if I have a negative 1 times 3 plus h, you can see that here, negative 1 times 3 plus h. And then in the denominator, we're going to have h times 3 plus h. All right, so let's simplify what we can in our numerator. We would have 3 minus 3 minus h. So the 3 minus 3 would drop out, and that would leave us with negative h over h. So we could get the h's to drop out. And that would leave us with negative 1 over 3 plus h. So now we're ready to take our limit. Let's plug in 0 in the place of h. And we'll get negative 1 third. So there is our slope. Okay, so now we have a point and we have a slope. So let's create our equation. So again, I'm going to use y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. 
and my point was 3, 1, so 3 for x and 1 for y, and the slope we just found was negative 1 third. So there's our point slope form. If we distribute that negative 1 third and move the 1 over to the right hand side, then we would have slope intercept form. And we also could rewrite that in standard form with everything over on one side. But remember in standard form you also cannot have any fractions. So I would add the 1 third x and I would subtract the 2 and then I would multiply the whole thing by 3 to get rid of the fractions. And so this would be the equation of my line in standard form. All right, let's look at another example. For this one, they tell us that f of x is equal to the square root of x, and they ask us to find the slope at the three points 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. Okay, so you mean that I'm going to have to do all of that work that I was just doing, I'm going to have to do that three times? Uh, this three times. Well, there's an easier way that we can do that if we have to evaluate the slope at multiple points. Now, it's always easier to work with numbers than it is with letters. So if you are only evaluating the slope at one point, you definitely want to go ahead and plug in your A value. But if you're asked to evaluate the slope at multiple points as we are here, don't put in a specific value for A just leave the variable a and what you'll get is an equation for the slope that you could plug any value into. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I have f of a plus h, right? that means put a plus h in the place of x in this equation, put a plus h in the place of x here, that'd be the square root of a plus h, then we're going to subtract from that f of a. So we'll put a in the place of x, put a in the place of x, and that would be the square root of a, and divide the whole thing by h. So now we're back to doing limit work like we did previously. This is not well behaved because if you do direct substitution, you'll get zero in the denominator. And so what I need to do is multiply by the conjugate. Remember, it is the exact same numbers but the opposite sign. So I had a negative here, I'll use a positive here. And of course, what I do to the numerator, I have to do to the denominator. All right, so we're gonna FOIL that numerator. The square root of a plus h times the square root of a plus h would just be a plus h. Then the square root of a plus h times a positive square root of a, and the square root of a plus h times a negative square root of a will cancel each other out and the negative square root of a times the positive square root of a would be negative a. And in the denominator, we're just bringing both of those things along. All right, so if you'll notice, we could simplify the a's in our numerator. That's gonna leave us with h in the numerator. We could cancel the h in the numerator with the h in the denominator, and that will leave us with one over the square root of a plus h plus the square root of a. Now let's see if we fixed our problem. Let's try direct substitution again. And so when I put zero in for h, I'm gonna get one over the square root of a plus the square root of a. That would be one over two square roots of a. And so instead of getting a number this time, I got a formula for my slope. I can put in any a value that I want. So for instance, when they say find the slope at the point one, one, this is my a value, this is my f of a, and this is my formula for slope. So all I have to do is put the a value into the formula. So if I put one in the place of a, I'm gonna get one half for my slope. Look at the next one. For the next one, they want me to find the slope at four, two. So what's my a value? It's four, so let's put four in the place of a right there, and that would give me 1 over 2 times the square root of 4, so 1 over 2 times 2, or 1 fourth. All right, try the last one. We're trying to find the slope at 9, 3. What are you going to put in for a? You're going to put in 9, and so we'll end up with 1 sixth. So again, if they ask you to evaluate 
the slope at a singular point, put the number in. If they ask you to evaluate the slope at multiple points, then we can leave A in and come up with an equation that will work for multiple points. All right, so let's review what we've looked at today, creating the equation of a tangent line with yet a different equation. All right, so for this one, it asked me to find the equation at the point x is equal to 3, but they didn't give me the y value. If they only give me x, how can I find y? Well, I'm going to take 3 and I'm going to plug it into the equation. So if I plug in 3, 3 squared is 9, minus 2 is 7, and so that ordered pair would be 3, 7. All right, so now I want to find the slope at x is equal to 3, so here's that same formula we've been using. Our a value is 3 and f of a is 7, so since it is only asking me to evaluate at one point, then I'm going to go ahead and plug those values in from the beginning. All right, so now I need f of 3 plus h. If f of x is x squared minus 2, f of 3 plus h tells me to put 3 plus h in the place of x. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put 3 plus h in the place of x. So that would be 3 plus h squared minus 2. Now, 3 plus h squared literally means 3 plus h times 3 plus h. You're going to have to FOIL that out. And so that would be 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times h is 3h. h times 3 is 3h. And h times h is h squared. And then we still have our minus 2. can simplify that just a little bit. So we can say 9 minus 2 is 7, and we can say 3h plus 3h is 6h. So that's what f of 3 plus h is equal to. All right, so now let's come back over here to our formula. It says take the limit of f of 3 plus h. All right, so we just got 7 plus 6h plus h squared for 3 plus h. Then we'll subtract 7 from that and divide by h. Is that well behaved? No. If I do direct substitution, I get zero in the denominator. So let's see if we can simplify it to make it well behaved. What will simplify in your numerator? Your seven and negative seven will drop out. And then every term that is left in the numerator has an H in it. So let's factor an H out of the numerator. And then I'll be able to cancel that H in the numerator and the denominator. What I'm left with then is a polynomial. It's well behaved. I can do direct substitution and I'll get my limit is six. All right, so what was that that we just found? That was the slope. So now I have a point, three, seven, and a slope, six, and I can create the equation of the line. So if I use point slope form, I'm gonna have y minus y1, our y value was seven, is equal to m, our slope we found was 6, and then x minus x1, x1 was 3. So that would be our point slope form. If we distribute the 6 and move the 7 over to the right, then that would give us slope intercept form. And if we move it all over to one side, set equal to 0, with no fractions, that would give us standard form.